I would say this is the fundamental step of any good morning. And if you don't do this enough, you are messing yourself up in a number of ways. If you can learn to do this, you will do your best work. You are actually tuning up and making your neural circuits for focus and attention better. You can drop in like a laser. So what's the routine then, the ultimate morning and evening routine to set your brain and your mind up for optimal performance and not getting brain fog? So I get up, obviously I use the restroom, I drink some water. I do think that hydrating is very important. Yes. Uh, so I will, I'll drink some, some water. And then the fundamental layer of health is to set your circadian rhythm. The simplest way to do that is to go outside for 10 minutes and get some bright light in your eyes. You do not have to look directly into the sun, but you do want to get outside out of shade cover if you can, because once every 24 hours, you're going to get a, a peak in cortisol, which is a healthy peak. You want that peak to happen early in the day because it sets up alertness for the remainder of the day. Mm. If that cortisol peak starts to drift too late in the day, you start seeing signs of depression. It's actually a well-known marker of depression. So you want that cortisol almost stressed out kind of oh, the day's beginning i have a lot to do feeling that's a healthy thing you want that happening early in the day mm. the sunlight will wake you up and what's really cool is that over time you'll start to notice the sunlight waking you up more and more the system becomes tuned up so get that morning light it sets a number of things in motion such as your melatonin rhythm to happen 16 hours later to help you fall asleep i would say this is the fundamental step of any good morning and if you don't do this enough, you are messing yourself up in a number of ways. So then I come back inside and then I do not drink caffeine right away. It's important in many ways to delay caffeine enough so that you can clear out some of the chemical signals in the brain and body that lead to a feeling of fatigue. So the longer you're awake, the more a molecule called adenosine builds up in your system. And when you sleep, you push that adenosine level back down. When you wake up in the morning, that adenosine level can be zero, but oftentimes there's still some hanging around. Caffeine is an adenosine antagonist. It blocks adenosine function. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's effectively what it does. So if you wake up and you've got, let's say 20%, let's make, uh, this is arbitrary, but 20% of your adenosine has still hasn't been cleared out. That's sort of a drowsiness that you woke up with. Mm -hmm. Then you go and you drink your coffee and you crush that, that uh, ability of adenosine to have that effect, but it hasn't gone away so that when your coffee wears off mid-morning, now that adenosine is there and you feel like there's a mid-morning crash or an afternoon crash. So I delay my caffeine intake for about 90 and ideally 120 mm. minutes after I wake up. So caffeine in the form of coffee is great, but you should probably drink two volumes of water for every one volume of, of coffee you drink in order to hydrate. And a lot of people feel jittery when they drink caffeine or they feel lightheaded or they suddenly get hungry, oftentimes that's because they're sodium depleted. Mm. There's a lot of good science now to support the fact that if you're feeling lightheaded or you feel like you have quote unquote low blood sugar, oftentimes taking a little pinch of salt, putting in some water and drinking that, maybe with some lemon juice to adjust the taste, all of a sudden you, your shaking stabilizes, you feel more alert. Why? Because salt, Salt and water have an interesting relationship. It increases blood volume, and oftentimes then you're getting more blood flow to the brain simply by in increasing your sodium intake. Okay, and water then salt. everybody should be getting 120 to 150, and maybe even 150 to 180 minutes of so-called zone two cardio a week. This is the kind of cardiovascular exercise where you're doing work, you could have a conversation, but you're kind of at the threshold where it's not super easy to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. We're not talking sprints. The, there's just a myriad of effects on heart health, uh, you know, vascular health all over the body, gut microbiome, mus Everything. musculoskeletal yeah. stability, mental health, all these kinds of things. So I have a routine where I either weight train for an hour in the morning or I do a portion of that weekly cardio. Mm -hmm. And I just alternate weight train one day, cardio the next, weight drink. And then one day a week, I don't do anything. I don't do any exercise. Then I would shower and then do my 90 work minute work bout, but sometimes I do the 90 minute work bout first. Mm -hmm. And that's generally what, when I'm starting to drink the caffeine. And so this 90 minute work bout is a kind of combined meditation, but also functional work for me. So for me, that could be writing, it could be planning a podcast, it could mm -hmm. be um, reading, 
It's something that's kind of hard. And the thing to understand about this 90 minute work bout is that you should expect some friction early on. It's not like you just flip a switch and you're in. That it takes some time to get into this focus mode and throughout that time, your brain will flicker in and out. But if you can learn to do this 90 minute bout, you will do your best work. And what's really wonderful is it's not just about the work that you perform in that bout. What ends up happening is really special. This sort of combined meditation work bout, as I'm calling it, has this effect of you are actually tuning up and making your neural circuits for focus and attention better. You can drop in like a laser. And so that's a, a, a holy part of my morning, as wow. holy as the sunlight viewing. Wow. And it's something that's very hard to build in, but I actually schedule it just like I would a Zoom call. But that 90 minute work bout, if I can do all those things and then get that 90 minute work bout and then eat my lunch, I feel like the, the system is set to make the rest of the day even better. Because we often hear about the perfect morning routine, but we're not thinking about how that routine influences the rest of the mm, day's routine. Yes. After lunch, do a 10 to 30 minute, either non-sleep deep rest or hypnosis, 20 minute naps, or things of the sort that I just described, the hypnosis I described, allow the neural plasticity that was triggered during that learning bout mm. to occur much more quickly. And so people learn faster. Interesting. Yeah. So you're... And, for some people, a nap isn't a feasible thing. Uh, some people say, are naps good or bad? If your nap interferes with your nighttime sleep, it's bad. Yeah. If your nap does not, then it's okay. And naps that are shorter than 90 minutes, so anywhere from 10, 20, 30, 45, but certainly not longer than 90 minutes, are going to be better than naps that are longer than 90 minutes for reasons related to sleep. So that kind of ends the morning. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the day just depends on what's happening. Sure. And I think it, it's too varied yeah. to describe. But I do suggest that people try and get a little bit of sunlight as the sun is setting in the evening or late afternoon, depending on time of year and where you live. Same practice, because mm -hmm. now you're sending two signals to that master circadian clock of when there's morning and when there's evening. And that clock has a, what we call a morning and an evening oscillator. So that if you can give more signals, then the system becomes more robust. It also ensures you a little bit against some of the exposure to nighttime bright light for reasons mm. related to retinal sensitivity. So go outside for 10 or 15 minutes, check fine if you need to check your tech mess text messages, do it out front of the, your building or right. your home. That's going to be very good. That's cool, okay. That's the ultimate morning routine for you. That's the ultimate morning routine for me. 